What is up guys, welcome back to another video, and in this video we're going to be continuing on with our macOS development with AppKit tutorial series, and in this particular video we are going to be taking a look at the NS slider in AppKit. Now what is NS slider? Well an NS slider is simply put a kind of control that allows you to drag a knob along a track whether it be horizontally, vertically, or in a knob style to adjust a value. Now there are three kinds of sliders. There is a horizontal linear slider which is the typical slider that you see uh, in most cases in Mac apps including in settings. There is also the vertical linear slider which is the same as a, as a normal linear slider ex except it's uh, except it's oriented vertically, so so you slide the knob up and down as opposed to left and right. And then there is another kind of slider, which is called the circular slider. And this slider acts like a knob. So let's say you are building a music production application and you want to simulate all the kinds of like knobs and things you would find in a recording studio's soundboard that is that's the kind of stuff that the circular slider would be good for there are also uses in there for the vertical sliders and the horizontal sliders for things like fade and all kinds of other different audio effects that you would find in a recording studio soundboard. All right, so let's kind of go over what we have for our project here to start with. So in Xcode, I have a, I currently have a text field called value field created. And then in view did load, we are configuring that text field. We are adding it, we are adding it and a slider that we're going to add as a sub view. And then we are configuring constraints for our field and slider. Keep in mind, this isn't going to build and, and run because we haven't created and customized our NS slider yet. And then down at the very bottom, so at the very, very bottom of the file here, you can see I have a private func uh, value changed. Now this, this method, as you, know, as you can see, is annotated with at objc, so Objective-C can communicate with it. And it takes in an NS slider. Now, what is this method supposed to do? Well, this method is going to get run every time the value of the slider changes. So then you can change the value uh, inside of our text field or do whatever you need to do every time the value of a slider changes. So this will be its action method. All right, that's kind of what we have right now. And so let's go ahead and actually create this slider. All right. So beneath our text field, we're going to say var value slider equals ns slider and this is going to take in a few things it's going to take in the initial value it's going to take in the minimum value the maximum value the target and the action now these uh, some of these you don't have to provide but we're going to provide them anyway if you want to look at the other initializers, you can read the documentation or look at the autocomplete. So we'll say value. All 
Uh, I don't want that. Okay. So let's see here. We want... Yep, so we want value, we'll set it to zero, min value, which is going to be a double, just like our value. Uh, we want this to be, let's say, Let's say we want the this value to be maybe 100 and 150, let's say. But the min value is gonna be zero. And then the max value is going to be 150 like that and then we'll have a target which we're gonna set to nil and then an action which is going to be a selector and this method is going to be value changed So now we have our slider object actually created. Let's configure this slider. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the color of the track of our slider. You don't have to do this. The default is going to be whatever your system accent color is. But if you want it to be something specific all the time, this is how you would do it. Value slider dot track fill color. We're going to set it to system green. So it's a bright color that stands out. So we have our slider now with a track fill color. What if we want to set a, a what if we want to set a different increment value when the option key is pressed? Because that is something you can do with a slider. And to do that, we need to say value slider dot alt alt increment value so alt increment value is going to be a double and we're gonna set this to 10 so it'll go excuse me it'll go up or down by 10 when you're holding down the option key all right there are many other uh, properties here such as is vertical um, there is th there's also the there's also properties for adjusting the size of the knob or, or, or as it's called or as they call it the thumb of the slider so if you want to explore some of those you can And now, what we're going to do is we'll say value slider translates auto resizing mask into constraints equals false. 
All right. So now, so now we have that configured to uh, use programmatic constraints with auto layout. Let's talk a little bit about our layout here. So when we look at our code, okay. So when we look at our constraints, we have our text field and our slider next to each other. Uh, the text field is on the left hand side, whereas the slider takes up the rest of the screen on the, or the rest of the width of the window on the right. Uh, our text field is 150, I believe it is. Let's see. Yes. It's 150 wide, so it doesn't take up a whole lot of the window, just enough for the number. And then the slider is, of course, uh, next to it, where there's 20 units of padding in between the edge of the view on either side and in between the text field and slider. So there's one thing we need to do now and that is we need to modify our uh, our action method because if we build and run our code You can see there's zero in our text field, and our slider is at is also at zero. Well, if we adjust our slider, you can see the value in our text field doesn't change. So how do we do that? Well, let's go down to our action method. And in its body, we're going to say value field dot string value is equal to a string representation of value slider dot double value. Now, double value is the property that you use to retrieve the value stored in the t in the slider. All right. So now, what we can do is we can save this, run it, and now if we adjust our slider. We have 120.0. We can adjust it again. And we can and now we get 80.0. And we got 100.0. Right. So you can see it's going up and it's going up and down by uh, by 10 each time. Now if we go back and we take a look at our property for uh, our alt increment value, so we can jump to definition here So we can see open var alt increment value, and it's a double. So, in the document, like in the um, in the editor itself, it does it doesn't seem to want to show what it does. But if we go and let's try. Okay. 
All right, so what we'll do is we'll say value slider alt increment value and we'll take a look at its documentation in the autocomplete. Okay. So you can see that this that this does indeed adjust the value uh, by a certain amount when the uh, user option drags the slider knob. Now, because I'm using voiceover, it uses this property by default. But if you were just, if, like if you were not using voiceover and dragging it with your mouse, it would increment by one. So that pretty much does it for this video on how you can use the vertical linear slider. In the next video, we'll talk about how we can use the NS slider in its vertical orientation. And then we'll also, in the, net, in the video after that, take a look at how we can use the circular slider. So, so thank you all so very much for watching. Make sure you follow me on Twitter for more. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see you later.